Hello dear friends, this is Ewell Humphreys and I'm so glad to be back. Have an opportunity to share a word with you tonight, today at this time right here in my study at home. And I hope and pray that these Bible reflections messages will be a blessing to your heart and a way of life for you. I praise God because I believe the Holy Spirit's leading me to say a word that you need to hear. I want to speak to you <clears throat> on this subject uh, for just a few minutes. I want to speak to you on some aspects of love. Love is the great grace of God in this world. Love is the greatest thing in this life that we live. We need to recognize the beauty and blessing of love. I like what Oscar Hammerstein wrote before he died, just a little couplet. He said, he said, a, a song is not a song until it's sung, and a bell is not a bell until it's rung. And God did not put love in our hearts to stay, for love is not love until it's given away. <laughs> I think that's good, because love is really expressed when we give it and use it to others. And it's right. The more you give love, the more you will receive love. And the less you give love, the less you receive. Because you see, love is not love until it's given away. And that's important. The Bible teaches some aspects of love over in the book of 1 Corinthians in the 13th chapter, verses 4 it's and 5. Here's what it says. It says, love suffers long and is patient, is kind. It does not vaunt itself up, is not proud, and it does not have, uh, behave itself unseemingly. It does not seek its own. It's humble and unselfish. And so we see some few aspects of love in these scriptures that I'd like to share with you. I'd like to share, first of all, the fact that love is patient. Where do we get patience? We get it from love. Where do we get patience from trials and troubles? But in it we find love is that which gives us the momentum to go forward, to accomplish much, and to sing the praise of God even in the fire. We can find patience. Patience because love is patient. Be filled with the love of God and you'll be filled with patience. The Bible says over in Romans the 12th chapter, verse 12, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and continue all the time in prayer. So here, here, is, here is a very important verse. Rejoice, rejoice in hope. Oh, never give up hope, dear friends. Things are going to get better for you. Keep believing, keep believing, and God's going to bring you out, and God will bring you in, and you'll find the answer when you find love, the love of God in your heart, making a way for you. It will not always be the most pleasant thing, at the start, <clears throat> but it will end up, <coughs> excuse me, it will end up at a place where you can find victory and you will know it's right and all is well. Praise God. Notice here, rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation. You see, we have to have trouble in order to develop patience. God wants you to be patient. So as he said in the book of James, that you could be complete wanting nothing. But in order to have patience, we must go through trial and tribulation, patient and tribulation, and continuing all the time in prayer. And so right here between hope and prayer, we find patience. And so patience is built on hope and in prayer. And so this is important to understand. And oh, another thing we see here, is, and that is that, that uh, we, we have uh, patience in regard to the coming of the Lord. As you know, the Bible teaches Jesus is coming back. And we need to know that. And some of you out there are saying, Praise God, I pray that He will come soon. I want you to know that He's coming back. And we need to be patient and wait for His coming. The Bible says, Second Thessalonians, the third chapter, and verse 3, And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ to return. And so may, oh, may the Lord direct your heart to me into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. He's coming back. 
the trumpet will sound. And for some, it will be a time of terror. But for you that believe in the Lord and know God is yours and heaven's your home, you're going to look with glory and brightness and you're going to say, Hallelujah, Jesus comes. The bridegroom comes. Go ye out to meet him. Hallelujah. And so it's important that we know we need to be patient. Another thing, it says here that we're to be kind. Kind to one another. Patient is, I mean, love is patient and it's kind. We need to show kindness to others. Instead of criticizing others, find something good to say about them. Instead of running somebody down, try to say something that will lift him up. Instead of looking all uh, at people with a bitter frown, look at them with a smile and believe that good things are there in them. So be kind to one another. Parents, be kind to each other. Children, be kind to your brothers and sisters. Be kind to members of your family. Be kind to your neighbors. Be kind, be kind. The Bible says in uh, Ephesians, the, uh, the fourth chapter, and be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God has forgiven you for Christ's sake. So we need to be kind one to another, and forgive one another. I'm speaking to somebody that has a grudge against someone, maybe in your family, maybe down the street, maybe somebody you work with. Let me tell you something, dear friend. I want you to learn through the love of God to forgive that person because God forgives you. Forgive that person no matter what they've done because God's love will grow in your life and you'll find something better than bitterness and revenge. So much better. You'll find peace and the joy of the Lord, which is your strength, and you'll go on because God is going with you. Be kind and forgive, forgive, forgive one another, and that's important. Another thing we see here in love is that it seeks not its own. It's not selfish. It seeks the welfare of others. See, real love is bigger and better and purer than loving oneself and one's own family. A real love of God in your heart will cause you to love others and care for others as well as for you and for other families as well as for your own family. The Bible says over in Luke the 9, chapter verse 23, Jesus said, If any man will follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Let him deny himself, you see. Self is the root cause of evil in our lives. Self is the thing that causes us to turn our backs on people that are in need. Self is what closes the door to love and opens the door to selfishness and envy and all those things of covetousness. And it makes for unhappiness and a life that is spoiled with the dew of, of the night instead of the morning. So look to God and pray for hope and pray for health and pray for love, the love of God, the love of God. I want you to notice something, and that is that every one of us have in our lives the love of God. Especially I'm talking to Christians. If you have ever accepted Christ as your Lord, however you might feel, desolate or alone, I want you to know you've got the love of God in you. Now sometimes we cover it up, but we need to open up that heart. Now listen, in Romans the 5th chapter, verse 5, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given to us. So the Holy Spirit of God comes and transplants into our heart the love of God. God's love is in you. Open the door of that heart and let that love flow out. Let that love reach out to others. Open the windows and let that love go out and it'll bring in the fresh breezes of God's potential might and mercy and love. Oh, learn that the love of God is in you. And the greatest thing you can do is to love others because God loves you. And that's, that's important. That's important. I, uh, I like the story of the father who took his little boy way back in, in Scotland. He took him he wanted, to, he wanted to impress him with the love of God, and they were talking, and he went up on a high hill, and the father said, Now, son, look yonder. Look yonder northward. That's Scotland. And look yonder westward. That's, that's England. And look out here southward. That's, that's the ocean. Oh, you can see. He says, Son, God's love. God's love 
is even bigger than all that. And the little boy says, wow. Well, he said, then, Father, we must be right in the middle of it. <laughs> and dear friend, I want you to know that's the truth. You are right now, wherever you are, however dark it might seem to be at this hour, or however bright it might seem, however happy or however humble or however miserable you might be, I want you to know something, dear friend. You are right in the middle of God's love. God loves you, and He wants to bring you up and to bring you out and to make you strong. One of the great scriptures in the Bible is in 1 John 4, 10 and 11. It says, Herein is love. Not that we love God, but He loved us and gave His Son to be a sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. And praise God. This is the truth I leave with you. If God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. God bless you and help you to love God and love others. Amen.